In this video we will use ASUS with V-Ray and 3ds Max 2024. For this we will check out the new color management system, then go through all required scene preparation techniques and finally talk about the benefits of using this new workflow. So with the arrival of 3ds Max 2024, we have now full support of color management through 3ds Max itself. That means now you have full support for OCRO and you can render everything in ASUS CG color space through 3ds Max directly. And that's why I thought it's a good idea to update my workflow video about how to use ASUS CG with V-Ray together with 3ds Max 2024. So let's first talk a little bit about this dummy scene that I prepared in here. And this one as of now is not using this new color management mode. So we're not using this OCRO mode in here. It is set to this gamma workflow mode. And that means it works the same like earlier versions of 3ds Max. Then here in the V-Ray render settings, you can see the version of V-Ray which I'm using in case something looks different for you. And you can also see that the color management mode here is set to sRGB as of now. So this would be here our starting point. And I tried to build a scene that basically is super simple, but it should have all of the main things that you may encounter when you try to convert sRGB scenes to ASUS CG scenes. And we'll go through each of them, how we can handle those. So the most important thing is preparation. No matter if you use the new color management mode in 2024, or if you use the older method in earlier 3ds Max versions, where you are forced to use the color management through V-Ray here. And as I said, both of those require preparations and that is the most important step in order to get a correct ASUS CG workflow. So we have here a very simple scene that uses an HDRI for the whole lighting that is this HDRI app here. And then we have this simple object that has a diffuse map, then it has a normal map for bump details and it uses a roughness map in order to break up our speculars in here. So those are all the bitmaps that we're using in the scene. And now in order to get a correct result, we need to define for each of those bitmaps in which color space they are in and how they should be rendered or interpreted. So if you add a new V-Ray bitmap, let's do this here. Let's just add this one in here, for example. And then you can see that by default, if you add a new V-Ray bitmap into your scene, then the color space transfer function is set to auto and the RGB primaries are set to default. So depending on where and how you're gonna use this bitmap in your shader, you may have to change here these RGB primaries and also the color space transfer function. And sometimes V-Ray does this already automatically for you by guessing how you use this image. So in this case, for example, this here is a normal map. And if I plug this into this normal map slot, you can see that the colors changed and that's because it recognizes it's being used as a normal map. It changed the RGB primaries here to raw and then also the color space transfer function to none. Now let's add a new V-Ray bitmap and then let's also load the same picture in here. You can see the colors now by default are different again. And now if I plug this, for example, into the roughness, you can see in this case, it didn't really change the colors, even though most likely whatever you want to load in the roughness should also be loaded as a raw data without any color space transfer function. So you can see sometimes it's doing automatic changes for you and sometimes not. And that's because the V-Ray bitmap by itself has no idea in what color space this data here is in. And it has to make these kind of guesses, which in case of the normal map sometimes is correct and sometimes not. But there's a very easy way to go around that and that is by just name tagging here your images. So if I open the scene here, you can see that this normal map here is just called normal.jpg. And then I just copied the same normal map and I just gave it this underscore raw image tag in here. And then once I load this, you can see that the colors here change, even though the color space transfer function is set to auto and the RGB primaries are set to default because by recognizing this name tag in here, it knows how this data here should be read and you don't have to do any kind of manual changes. 
So now knowing all of this, we have to prepare our scene correctly. And as we learned, there are two different methods to do that. One is to use name tags and that I'm gonna do here on the left hand side. And for all of those here, the color space transfer function is set to auto and the RGB primaries to default. So basically just how you load in a default V-Ray bitmap. And then here on the right hand side, we're gonna use the manual way where we go in and choose these settings here by ourselves manually if for whatever reason we cannot or do not want to use name tags here for our images. So let's start up here with the lighting in our scene. And here we're using an HDRI. And in order to load the HDRI correctly with a name tag, we would need to use the underscore lin underscore sRGB name tag. So whenever we do this, then we can make sure that our HDR will be loaded correctly and rendered correctly in whatever rendering color space we're using. And for the manual way, we would need to go in here and then define the RGB primaries to be sRGB and then the color space transfer function to none because this is a linear map in sRGB color space. So for our diffuse map, if we want to use a name tag, we can easily use this underscore sRGB name tag and then our map here is rendered and loaded correctly in whatever color space we're using. And if we want to use the manual way, not using a name tag, then in this case, we would need to define the RGB primaries to be sRGB and then the color space transfer functions also to be sRGB. Now we have our normal map here left and for the name tagged one, we can easily just use the underscore raw name tag. Once we do this, we can see the colors are changing. And for the manual way, we would need to go in and set the RGB primaries to raw and the color space transfer function to none. In this case, V-Ray did this already automatically once we connected here this node through the normal bump node. So in most cases for a normal map, this is already done automatically for you. But in case of the roughness map here, for example, that's not the case. So for this, let's also use a name tag. So roughness underscore raw, because that's also a data map. That's everything that you have to do here for the roughness map if you're using name tags. And if you don't use name tags, then you would need to go in and define the primaries to be raw and the color space transfer function to be none. So now you can see here our left hand side and the right hand side look exactly the same. And we could now choose any of those images or those images here for rendering our scene. It really doesn't matter. But in terms of setup time, of course, the one that use name tags here is much better because you can basically just leave the color space transfer function always to auto and this one here always to default and V-Ray will make all the correct settings here by itself without you having to go in and always choosing here the correct settings. This one here also works of course if you can't change the name for your textures and you can't really use name tags you can use also this way but as said it takes a little bit more time to go in and prepare your scene. Also something that I'm doing is that if I'm using images here without name tag to just make sure that I'm never using the auto function here and the color space transfer function and to never use the default option in the RGB primaries because if you don't have any name tags in here, V-Ray will make these choices here automatically for you if these here are set to automatic modes. And those can be different depending on the rendering color space that you're using. So in sRGB rendering color space, the image here will be interpreted differently than in ASUS CG rendering color space, for example. So I said, always make it a habit to not use this auto function and the default option in here if you don't have images which are name tagged. If your images are name tagged, then this of course should be left like this and V-Ray will make these kind of choices here automatically for you. So now before we can finally enable the new color management in 3ds Max 2024, there's just one last step here in the V-Ray frame buffer, which I want to talk about. So at the moment we're rendering internally a linear image 
in sRGB color space. In order to make that appear nicely on our sRGB monitor, we have to apply some kind of tone mapping procedure in here. And for this, I just chose here a filmic tone map and then also I played with a little bit the contrast here in this exposure node. And because we now want to switch to ACCG and use the OCAO configuration file in order to deal with the tone mapping and so on, let's first disable those existing tone mapping procedures in here. We can leave the white balance because that basically just defines the color tint here in the scene, but it will disable anything that basically affects the dynamic range of our image and how it's displayed on the monitor and let the OCRO configuration file handle this instead of using the ones that are based on the sRGB rendered image. So now after we have successfully loaded here all of our image files correctly and we also prepared our frame buffer in order to render a ACES CG image here correctly, we are finally at the step where we can now switch to use ACES CG color space. And in earlier versions of 3ds Max, you have to do this in V-Ray by using the color management here through the render settings in V-Ray. And I'm not gonna do this now because I have my own dedicated video in my channel that deals with this workflow. But in this video, we will just discuss about how we can do this in the latest version of 3ds Max 2024. And here we can just easily use the color management mode and set this one here to this OCIO option. And then once you do this, there's a bunch of different settings in here. And we're not gonna deal with this for now. Let's just enable this one in here. You will get a warning message that this is a technology preview. So things will maybe change in the future. So let's just use yes in here. And then once we do this, you can see that a lot of stuff is changing subtly. So in our frame buffer, we still have our old sRGB rendering and those changes are applied to this one here. So in order to get our final result, we have to press the rendering button again. Now you can see the colors are changing again. And now we have the same scene here rendered in SSCG color space using the 3ds Max 2024 OCIO color management in here. So now you can see we have a different result, which we may or may not prefer compared to the previous one. The key point is just that this image here is rendered fully in ACES CG color space, while the first picture was rendered in sRGB. And if we want to, we can bring back, for example, here this exposure, if we want to add a little bit more contrast, or maybe we choose to add a little bit more brightness in order to just get something which looked maybe a little bit more like the previous picture. And yeah, I think like this, it basically kind of looks okay. So now the key question is, why is this new color management mode in 3ds Max 2024 now better or preferred than the way we had before in V-Ray? And I would say it basically just comes down to ease of use. So as you saw, everything was just a one button click once we prepared here our scene and it automatically switched here our display correction to OCIO. It made all the correct settings in here. You didn't have to download separately the OCIO configuration from the online resources and so on. Everything is basically integrated directly into 3ds Max itself and you don't really require any external resources anymore. Additionally, there are some extra goodies like for example, this new color selector where you can switch between a scene referred mode and a display referred mode. So that's also quite nice. And you can see that it even color manages here your material editor, which is something that I personally don't really like, but you can switch it off, for example, here in the color management. If you go to the advanced settings and then you can disable here this automatic checkbox and just say that this one here is not tone mapped. So once you do this, Everything here looks the same way as it did earlier. And that's quite nice that you have this option to choose which parts of 3ds Max will be color managed and which ones won't. You will also see that once you enable this 3ds Max color management, then here the color management in the V-Ray settings is completely grayed out. 
you can't really make any changes in here anymore and that will stay like this until you basically switch out of this color management mode and just go back to this gamma workflow mode in here and then you will be able to access the regular settings here in the color management through V-Ray. So as you saw, once we prepared our scene in here, it was quite easy to switch to Aces CG color space. It was basically just a click of a button. Everything went automatically from here on. So that is also my point of this video. The most important step of using Aces CG is to basically prepare your scene in a way which will make sure that all your resources are loaded correctly and then you also shouldn't have any unwanted surprises. So if you watch this video until here, chances are that you also enjoy the content that I provide over on my Patreon, where you can find all of my scene files, additional bonus videos and a whole class on car rendering. So check this out if that has any additional value for you. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you then.